What's going on, y'all? It's J.D. Pakel today on the Hard Count. Jackson Dart, he's down to Oklahoma and Ole Miss. Which will he choose? We will discuss next. Welcome into CFB with JD, the people's channel for every single thing that you know that you love about college football. It happens here on this channel. So subscribe to the channel to stay up with every single thing we're doing. We do a video nearly every single day. Y'all drive the show. Jack McKenzie, Armstrong Sims, they make the magic happen. Also, quick plug, follow me on Twitter at JD Pakel. We do a lot of things related to this show. On that social media channel, we have polls, we have topics to discuss. We even open it up and say, hey, what do y'all want to see? So just keep an eye out for that. Follow along so you can stay up with everything we're doing. So Jackson Dart is the number two available player in the transfer portal right now, according to 24-7 Sports. He's given a grade of 99. I know, how, how do you say you're, you're second with a grade of 99? Well, Caleb Williams is number one with a grade of 1,000, so I guess that's fair. But Jackson Dart entered the portal after, how do I say this? It wasn't so much, I don't think, in response to Caleb Williams as much as I think it was to Lincoln Riley coming to USC because there was already smoke about him leaving USC as soon as Riley's hire got announced. So I don't think it's really fair to say he was scared of Caleb Williams coming to USC, but I guess we'll never know. We'll see if Caleb Williams even goes to USC because at the time it's recording, he's still uncommitted. According to On3Sports, according to ESPN, Dart is down to two schools. He's officially visited both of them already, one being Ole Miss, the other being Oklahoma. Both are very interesting fits to me for a number of different reasons. We're going to go down the pros and cons for both of them. So first of all, for Oklahoma, the pros, I think, are very obvious. You have a very quarterback-friendly system in Jeff Lebby. You look at the quarterbacks, Jeff Lebby's coach, look at the amount of success his offenses have had, and it's a no-brainer Grand Slam, inside the park home run, three point. I mean, every single positive sports metaphor you want to put to it, it is that for Jackson Dart and Jeff Levy. It's a phenomenal quarterback and offensive coordinator marriage. The con, however, is that there's already a quarterback committed to Oklahoma in Dylan Gabriel. And to take that a step further, the quarterback committed is a former quarterback of Jeff Levy's. So if I'm Jackson Dart and leaning back in my chair, I'm saying, Okay, so you want me to come play for your school. That makes sense. I am the number two player in the portal right now. But there's somebody already in my desired spot. And the guy in my desired spot, the guy calling the plays has a relationship with him. Huh. That's a tough sell. Just to be honest, for Jackson Dart, a guy who's going to make a lot of money in the National Football League one day, a guy who is going to have a really outstanding college career wherever he goes, that's a difficult sell for me. Oklahoma needs to get another quarterback on their roster. Jackson Dart would be a phenomenal get for them, but I don't know if I see the fit as much for Jackson Dart. He may go into Norman and win the job. He might be the best player for the job, but just from a purely logistic... I'm running into the mic here. From a purely logistic standpoint, I don't know exactly how I would feel as Jackson Dart going into a situation like that. So we'll see how that shakes out. If he is a starting quarterback for Oklahoma, he'd be wildly successful, in my humble opinion. But we'll see how that plays out. The second school, as we mentioned, Ole Miss. There's been a video, or excuse me, a picture, I guess, floating around social media of Lane Kiffin and Jackson Dart in the snow next to a brand new vehicle. Didn't get to see what logo that was on the vehicle. I'm going to assume it was well above my uh, range of being able to afford something like that. Anyway, uh, Jackson Dart was in Oxford, um, the pros for him coming to Ole Miss, I think, are also very black and white. To play in one of the best conferences, Nate, the best conference in the country right now, play against the best competition in the country right now. Again, for these kids that want to go professional, go to the NFL Junior and ball out, and you have a phenomenal case for yourself in your draft stock. It's, it's not that complicated. If you want to have no questions about the competition you played against when it comes to draft day, go to the SEC. It just makes sense. I don't want to say it just means more, but it does just make sense for Jackson Dart to go there. The thing that is interesting to me, in the same way why maybe it's kind of a, a pro for Oklahoma and their coaching staff, it's a bit of a question mark I have for Ole Miss because you have a brand new offensive coordinator in Charlie Weiss Jr. calling the plays. 
That's not to say I don't have faith in Charlie Weiss Jr. That's not to say they won't still be unbelievable offensively next year. They have so much talent on that roster. Lane Kiffin is an offensive wizard. He's proven that at multiple stops through over the years. But we haven't seen it work just yet with Charlie Weiss Jr. at Ole Miss. So regardless of how you feel about it, it's a risk. How much of a risk, again, is up to you, but I think there is still a risk there for someone like Jackson Dart. And so I was personally under the opinion, we had a video prep to go before we saw this headline, that West Virginia was the best landing spot for Jackson Dart because of Graham Harrell, and that was the most secure transfer because he'd go in, be the guy in a system he already knows. We're getting off track. It is the opposite end of the spectrum for Ole Miss and Charlie Weiss Jr. because it's a system that would be new to Ole Miss as a whole. A little bit of a gamble there. So what's he going to do? <laughs> if I had a crystal ball and could look into and look, look into it and tell you where he's going to go, I, I would do it a thousand percent. We'd probably have a phenomenal following if we had a real crystal ball on this show to look into and tell you where all the transfers are going. My money says Ole Miss. Again, I think it's just a little too crowded in Norman right now for Jackson Dart. I really do. It's nothing against Oklahoma. It's nothing against Jeff Lebby. It's just if I am Jackson Dart and I'm leaving because of potentially being too many cooks in the kitchen at USC. Again, we don't know that, but I think it's fair to wonder about that. I think it has a lot to do with Lincoln Rally, which we already mentioned, but why would you go somewhere that already has a seat taken that you want? Also worth noting, Ole Miss has the advantage of being the second place he visited. So when you're looking back at your visits, it's hard to imagine that there isn't some sort of advantage Ole Miss has being the most recent memory in his mind. So we'll see what happens. For my money, I think Ole Miss makes the most sense. Again, nothing against Oklahoma, but that's where we're going to fall in the matter. So appreciate you tuning in with us. Appreciate you uh, sticking with us through all of the murk and mire and muck that is the transfer portal right now. We're going to keep this party rolling to give you all of the information that you need to know about the crazy college football free agency. We'll keep the party rolling, and we will see y'all next time.